What do you think about error coins? Uh, error coins have a very limited market. Uh, people recognize an error and they're intrigued by it, but to pay money for it, there's only a few people that do it out of the general hobby. Right. It's a smaller percentage. And uh, an error can be any number of price uh, points. Mm -hmm. So you have a severe error, it's going to be more expensive, but how do you know how much expensive? Is it $5, $10, or 100 like You know, you never know what someone's going to pay. Yeah, you don't know what anybody's going to pay. There's no guidebooks that really help people figure this out. There's some guidelines, but uh, not to cover everything. So uh, I usually stay away from error coins. Yeah, I've noticed because I, I look around your shop and I'm like, yeah, I don't see very many errors. Maybe no, you, I mean, I'm, it might be a mistake, but uh, for the most, I do carry some error coins because I get them when I buy a collection. Okay. But for the most part, uh, I just don't offer them, and I don't like to buy them because it's, I'm buying something, and uh, if I pay five dollars for it, I might not be able to sell it for five. I might be able to only sell it for two or three because right. you know that error is not really that interesting to people. That's the other thing too. It can be an error, but is anybody interested in it? Right. You know, I have people to bring in. You know, here's a dozen pennies, and they have just a little bit of a double on the uh, one letter or the one number well that's an error yeah but nobody's really interested yeah you know i'm sorry you know? i mean some people might be but like the very small percentage of people uh-huh yeah they want the big errors where the coin is stamped halfway off of the planchet you know oh, that's okay, that's yeah. the error they look and say wow that's cool so i do have some errors but not too many I have an error coin that I found, mm -hmm. and it's doubled, but I don't know if I would pay money for the, a certain coin. Maybe if yeah. it was in really good shape, then I would pay money for it, but like, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things. It's like, I found it, so it's like, it's happy that I'm happy I found it, but like, would I pay money for it? Maybe. I <laughs> usually try to concentrate my finances and resources in other areas, so error coins is like the last thing I do. That makes sense. Okay, number 10. And then I've got follow-up questions. But um, number 10 is clean coins. I want your opinion. How often do you see them when you do evaluations of people's collections? And would you buy them? Uh, I like to have coins as nice and as original as possible. I always use the uh, term that Coins can be conserved using conservation or preservation. Those are acceptable, but uh, they should be handled professionally. You know, if you come in to a coin that has a bunch of dirt on it, yeah, you know, just use a soft rag and clean it off. It it can be cleaned. It needs to be cleaned. Who wants to buy a dirty coin? Right. You know, it's when people use tools or chemicals that uh, really alter the coin that's wrong that's what they don't want to be doing and um, I've seen people bring in some stuff that uh, well all Indian pennies somebody brought in a dozen Indian pennies they were all nice and shiny okay you know they weren't nice uh, originals they were well worn and shiny and I asked them why why are these all, you cleaned these, I can tell you cleaned them. Yeah. He says, yeah, but you wouldn't have wanted them if I hadn't cleaned them. And you're like, eh. That's not true. That's well, not if true. he dug them up from the sewers, yeah, I'm glad he cleaned <laughs> them. But, but for the most part, um, coins, you don't want to take away from what the coin is offering. With the, the original, uh, the coin has into it some character, people like that. Yeah. You know, if it's pristine, that's great. But if it has some character, they don't want you to take it away by taking an eraser on it and rubbing it out or something. You know, it, it alters the coin and nobody really wants that. Absolutely. I agree with you. 
Okay, so follow-up questions. Um, I've got some coins with me. Um, mm -hmm. That, well, first of all, I want to know if this 1854 seated quarter is cleaned. This this coin. This coin? Yeah. Okay, a seated Liberty. Okay. From 1854. Seated Liberty quarter. What do you want to know about this? Was it cleaned or not? Oh, was it cleaned or not? Because it's got this like shiny appearance, but it, you know it's not complete detail. So I just like wondered if it was cleaned. Coins are uh, exposed to a lot of different chemicals and environments, and some of those will be rubbed off, or the coin will absorb it. So, oh, okay. You know, a silver coin or a. Uh, even a uh, copper coin, a lot of times people back years and years ago had leather pouches or purses. Oh. And if that was kept in a leather pouch for years and years, those chemicals leached out onto the coin and the coin can be ruined. Uh, but other things that uh, you keep coins in, maybe some a handkerchief or a... Uh, paper towel over time if they're moved around they won't be cleaned but they'll be buffed you know so they'll have that shiny appearance so okay. a coin can almost be cleaned without you really actively cleaning it uh, this one here oh the other thing too is what you're looking for is a coin that is unnatural for the age and the wear that's on the coin. Okay. It should have, if it's going to be worn, if it's going to be in somebody's pocket, if it's going to be in your pocket, my pocket, the next guy's pocket, it should have some kind of uniform um, wear on it and dirt and toning. But All if right. it's unnatural, that's what we want to avoid. That's the cleaning part. So has this po coin been cleaned? Uh, I don't think it's been cleaned with anything other than maybe a soft cloth. That would get the high points looking nice. Um, but it's hard to say. It's hard to say. The darkness of it, sometimes that's an indicator that it was cleaned years and years ago okay and th then it turns dark after a while that's the other thing too is you think about it somebody's uh, fingerprint yeah it'll go on a coin but you won't know it until 10 years later when you try to when you wipe that coin and wait a second there's a fingerprint on it well that's not coming off anytime oh. you know that's in there but uh, i don't think this one's been cleaned but a uh, rather decent one though thank you um, next coin we got is 1938 Buffalo Nickel. 1938 Buffalo Nickel. Oh, that's a real nice one. It's it's a real nice one, but I was like, how nice is it? Is it like MS or is it AU? Well, two things will help you when you're grading coins or looking at something like that is you want a good magnifier and you want a good light source. This will... Then you look at the high points of the coin and what would wear first. You can see little areas where it's just not... Uh, there's a little rubbing off of it. You know, just okay. a little bit not much. On this one here, it's listed as AU, and it probably is, because there's just a little bit of flatness in certain high point areas. So I would say this is, this is good for an AU. If it's MS, um... Depends on who you talk to. 
Okay. That's the other thing. Yeah. Here's my opinion, then the next guy's opinion. Right. And if he wants to sell it at a higher price, he might call it MS. Uh, I would be comfortable with looking at this as an AU coin. What's cool about that, too, is that the Denver mint mark on the back is there's another D over D. Oh, I didn't, I didn't look for that. Oh, yes. Yep, you're right. It's easy to see, too. Well, then it's labeled wrong. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping I got a good deal, but I know hey, you don't like people saying like if they got a good deal or not, so <laughs> I'm not going to ask you about that. This is the coin I was talking about that is the error coin. Okay. It's a 1939 nickel with a double die reverse. Okay. Now, I didn't say I couldn't figure out if it's an era coin. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah, I, I see in the wording of Monticello, uh, the L's are definitely doubled. The, the cents, five cents, that's definitely doubled. Yeah, it's a double. You know, and it's not too hard to identify that. So when people do look for errors, they want something that they can identify as an error without too much trouble. Right. If you have to turn it and say, well, I don't know, I guess it's an error, that's not the one people like. Yeah, so I, I really like that one because it's doubled and I got it for a nickel. So. <laughs> you definitely can tell it is. Uh, I got this 65 nickel. <clears throat> I don't know if it's a good strike or is it a proof but it's not a San Francisco man. What do you want to know about this one? Is it just a regular business strike or is it a proof? Oh. Yeah, no, it's just a regular business strike. There's the, the details that you would see in a proof aren't there. You know, the f proof usually you have a better planchet, you have a better die, it's a polished die, and you have a better strike. Okay. It's uh, using more pressure twice. So the coin should really pop out, and the details in the pillars and the steps is kind of dull. Oh, okay. So, no, this is just a business strike. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, I've got this 55 nickel that is just this weird color. I don't know if it's originally supposed to look like that or what's going on with it. I mean, it doesn't look like the 65 is what I'm saying. The color is different. Oh. Well, coins do age, and especially in the environment they're in. So, uh, it was probably just exposed to um, some, I mean, there's chemicals in the air right now. Right, where we're at. If I left a, uh, a real beautiful proof coin right here and didn't touch it for 10 years, yeah, it would turn. It would turn a different color? Yeah. Because of the chemicals are in here. Okay. I mean, you know, uh, just lots of things. Uh, cardboard gives off uh, chemicals. Uh, that's why some of the coins in the uh, cardboard um, albums have right. a tendency to go. And uh, I found out just the hard way I had a uh, slab coin. You don't think of a slab coin. Once it's in there, it's protected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a display over in the window, and the sun got to it, and oh. it basically cooked it. So it toned bad. inside the slab. You know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It was a terrible thing. <laughs> I didn't want it. <laughs> it did turn out to be a tone coin with colors that are rainbow or beautiful. It was just a, you know, ugly coin. Okay. 
But, uh, yeah, the environment that this was in, there's nothing wrong with it. It just toned a little bit. And I think it's all right. Last coin I have is a 1916 Buffalo nickel. Uh, I just wonder what you would sell it for if you were to sell it. Oh. Well, looking at it, looks like it's a real nice coin. Probably an ex extra fine. Very fine at the very at the least. Well, when I price coins out, I use multiple different books, you know, depending on what I'm going for. Um, the red book is really nice for your basic coins, but when you get into some of the uh, more key coins, I'll use the dealer pricing. Okay. Okay. And that's the gray sheet that I use mostly. S Buffalo Nickel. Very fine condition. It's twenty-six dollars, but extra fine at sixty. Which takes a big jump. It does make a big jump. So, when I look at a coin like that, I usually think about that big jump. That I better be darn sure it's an extra fine because uh, that's a lot of money to be riding on that um, opinion. Right. So. Looking at it in that respect, I mean, a coin is what it is. I mean, other people might say it's extra fine, but looking at this could be a very fine. I would price this one probably around thirty dollars. Okay. More than more than twenty six that a very fine is because it's nicer, but not quite up to the extra fine of sixty dollars. Well, thank you. I, I found that one in circulation. So oh, no kidding. Got it for a nickel. And I was, like, really surprised that it was in such good shape. Well, that can't be a bad thing, can it? Nope. All right. All right. Well, Anything it was else? nice talking to you, thank you about this in your store. I'll show everybody your store so they know what I appreciate it looks it. like. 